to another Sunday School Short. Today we are in 2 Corinthians 1-4, through 4, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Like, subscribe, and share. Hit the bell notification for when new devos come out. Get into God's Word with me. Be a daily Bible reader. I'm just your encourager to do that. This is just a small synopsis of my time in God's Word. 2 Corinthians 1. Paul's receiving reports about his first letter, being 1 Corinthians, uh, that he was being slandered by false teachers. So he wrote this second letter to kind of defend his position. And it's an important letter for those who are working in ministry and those that are desiring to be in ministry. It begins talking about God as our comforter. He comforts us so that we can comfort others. It speaks of his struggles in Asia, which is modern-day Turkey. There you can see on the map. And it says, We stopped relying on ourselves and learned to rely only on God who raises the dead. Verse 9. And Paul says in 13, Our letters have been straightforward. There's nothing written between the lines here and nothing you can't understand. He tells them that he'll visit on his way to Macedonia, which you can see on the map, and on his way back, and then they'll send him on to Judah. Verse 22, He, being God, has identified us by uh, as his own by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised. Chapter 2 uh, tells them, being the church of Corinth there, why his visitation plans have changed. He didn't want to bring them grief by all the, all the correction that he was giving them in this, in this first letter. Paul describes his spreading of the good news like a sweet perfume rising up to God, the last part of 15. But this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved than by those who are perishing. To perishing, it has the smell of death, he says, and to those being saved, it is a life-giving perfume. Goes on to talk about preachers for personal profit versus him and others like him preaching the word of God with God's authority, know that knowing that God is watching. Chapter 3, the old way being the law versus the new way, the spirit. Okay, we live by the spirit. If you're born again, if you're made right with God. Verse 9, if the old way, being the law, which can, uh, which brings condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way which makes us right with God? Verse 10, in fact, the old way was not glorious at all uh, compared to the overwhelming glory of the new way. The old way has been replaced. The new way lasts forever. Chapter 4, if the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only for people perishing. The last part of uh, verse 4, chapter 4. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. One of the areas where uh, it shows, again, Jesus being God. It goes on to say that God, who said, let there be light, has made this light shine in our hearts so that we can know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ, verse 6. We are fragile clay jars that hold this great treasure, the next section talks about. Verse 16, though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. And it ends in the last part of 18, says, um, the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last for." ever. Get into God's Word. Join me in 2 Corinthians. Moving ahead. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.